Now an update on the war on AIDS and the impact of the latest drugs developed to fight the disease, Spencer Michaels reports. Like thousands of people with AIDS, 52-year-old Crandall Krauss of San Francisco goes through the ritual of taking 20 pills several times a day on a rigid schedule. That's the only way I can do it. If I take them one at a time, I'd be here until Tuesday. Hung Krauss, who is a writer, takes a combination of medicines that includes a protease inhibitor, a new class of drugs that foiled the ability of the AIDS virus, HIV, to reproduce itself. Before those drugs became available, Krauss and others were convinced that all they had to live for was the present. I thought, well, my life is coming to an end. So most of us didn't deny ourselves anything. We went on trips, we bought things, we bought new televisions, we'd buy a new car, um, we'd help our friends. Krauss's health improved dramatically, but with a new lease on life, thanks to protease inhibitors, he has had to adjust. All of a sudden, you have to put on the brakes. It's very different. You have to start thinking, you have to start budgeting your money, you have to start finding things that you're interested in doing. I'm active enough so that I can sit at the computer for a couple of hours at a stretch. And in the time that I've started taking the pretties, I've finished a novel, I've finished a play, and I've started two new books. And we're going to retry the medicines in, what, three or four days? Many HIV-positive patients are now coping with the reprieve of what only recently seemed like a death sentence. Just two years ago, 19 patients in Dr. David Senechek's practice of 600 people with AIDS died. Last year, only four. But patients like Marcus Wanakot and Andy Pesch aren't sure how to handle the extra time that's been handed them. All of a sudden, bam, I've been plunged in the whole idea of, I'm not going to die tomorrow, next week or next year. Uh, most likely, I'm going to have a fairly long life again. That is a wonderful, exciting thing to have, but it creates the whole dilemma of, now what am I going to do with my life? We were preparing for the end. And it's going to take some time for us to reintegrate ourselves into mainstream life. We have three options, essentially. Stay on disability, go back to the employer where you were before to continue your previous benefits, or jump off a cliff and look for a different job and with no benefits and the possibility of getting very ill again. Because without these medicines, there's no illusion here. We're completely dependent upon the protease inhibitors and the other medicines we take. There are other complications. For one, there hasn't been time for long-term studies of the new drugs. Everybody thinks that because of protease inhibitors, we should be happy. And initially you are, and then you realize you're out in no man's land again. You're taking a drug, you're feeling good, and any day it could end. Nelfinavir, Firamune, Videx, and Zeret are all for specifically for HIV. Doctors do action, know that if I a very strict regime of pill-taking is virus. not followed, Impact the virus can develop resistance and the pills won't work. 42-year-old Bill Sprick, a computer expert, complies to the letter. But so far, the protease inhibitors have not worked for him consistently. In fact, about 30% of people with AIDS have not been helped by the new drugs, especially if they have taken a long series of other AIDS medicines. Brick hasn't given up. He's now on an experimental protease inhibitor. It's a roller coaster. It, it, you, you feel really great when it looks good, but then when the numbers come crashing down, you get pretty depressed. It's like, oh no, here we go again. <laughs> this is another one that, that doesn't work. And I think the thing that right now is, is uh, worrying me the most is I've taken all the drugs that are presently available that are released, plus I'm taking one that isn't released, and um, it's kind of a time game. Unlike Sprick, 32-year-old Danny Cohn, a radiation therapist, essentially gave up on protease inhibitors because they made him feel worse. I was exhausted all the time and nauseous. Basically, my entire quality of life was gone. I was on vacation in Amsterdam, and I just decided not to take them anymore. And three days after I stopped, I felt great. Cohn says it's easier just to accept the notion that he will die. I'm certainly not interested in having a prolonged period of suffering or a prolonged period where 
um, I feel so bad about myself because of my health status that I don't want to be out in the world or something like that. So I don't think that of death as really a, that bad of a thing. I know what happens if you don't take the medication. Those patients die. Dr. Marcus Conan, a pioneer in the treatment of AIDS, hates for anyone to give up on protease inhibitors. Have you ever been on drugs like Quixivan or Latonavir? He thinks the new drugs may be the way to stop the spread of HIV, which now infects one million people in the United States. We perhaps can stop the transmission of this disease and ultimately eliminate AIDS in the United States. Now, that's not going to work in China, in India, in Africa. Protease inhibitors have yet to have an impact on the millions of infected people outside North America and Europe. That's because of their high cost, up to $25,000 a year. In the United States, the tab is often covered by insurance companies, at least most of them. Right now, for me, it comes out to about $800, $900 a month in, uh, in copay. So, well, but I tell you, this stuff, is, this stuff is doing what it's supposed to do, so mm, we really have no choice about it. For those without insurance but not on Medicaid, state and federal assistance programs pay for the drugs. But even in the U.S., there are roadblocks. Some states, unlike California and New York, have not allocated enough money to get the drugs to all those who are HIV positive. And some people, like the illegal drug users living in San Francisco's Tenderloin District, are not regarded as good candidates for the medication. Where the disease is going to go is in the underserved drug-using community, which is huge in this country, who do not have either the resources or the skills to utilize these new tools. Which means that it's not always... Meisha Irizarry works in the Tenderloin for a social service agency. A lot of our clients are active users and have no intention to stop drugs. Do you try to get these people on protease inhibitors or other drugs? We inform them. It's tricky because we don't have... Irizarry says the need to take the new drugs regularly makes this clientele difficult to manage. There is obscene poverty, lack of hygiene, uh, protease inhibitors require that people take them faithfully four times a day. If there is any speed of crack involved, of course, they're not able to maintain a schedule. If they get off the schedule, they develop a resistance to the drug. Therefore, they're no longer a candidate, and they will surely die. Nearly three-fourths of the residents at the rundown Ambassador Hotel, where Irizarry often sees clients, have AIDS, mostly contracted through illegal drug use. For these people, there have been no new leases on life, no worries about how to handle the reprieve. In fact, protease inhibitors play no role in the lives of people like 41-year-old Robert Brightshaw. They say this can save your life. I know, I know, I know. When I, when I start getting down, I'm, I'm going to get on it. But they say once you get on it, you've got to stay on it. You know, What's and I'm not prepared that? for that. Why are you not prepared for it? I'm just, I'm afraid of it right now. I'm afraid that, because, because I'm afraid that if, if something should happen, that stop it. And backfire and, 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 and the, 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 the immune to it won't work anymore, you know what I mean? Some here don't trust the government, doctors, or like Lee Burnside, the medication. Been on antibiotics for that? San Francisco Health Director Dr. Sandra Hernandez, herself an AIDS specialist, does not think doctors should routinely withhold the new drugs from patients they consider irresponsible. One of the public health responsibility in this arena is where people choose to take them but are poorly organized for whatever reason to do so that we devise programs to be able to support that and in fact we've done that in san francisco for poverty-stricken and more well-to-do aids patients alike taking protease inhibitors remains fraught with uncertainties researchers and health officials are still learning how to use the new drugs and are planning to issue new guidelines for hiv therapy later this year